behind the module. We have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. After Moon and Mars, India sets its sights on Venus and beyond. On 18 September, the Union Cabinet approved four mega space projects, including the next mission to the Moon, a mission to the planet Venus, follow ups to the ongoing Gaganyaan mission, and the setting up of an Indian space station. These four missions are a giant step towards India's Space Vision 2047. So how important are these missions for ISRO and for us Indians? Let's try to understand. Hello guys, I am Saurav and welcome to the ARC. On 23rd August 2023, lakhs of Indians looking at their TV and phone screens were eagerly and nervously waiting for the Chandrayaan-3 to land on the moon. The Vikram lander from Chandrayaan-3 successfully touched down on the moon surface at around 6 pm IST. We have achieved soft landing on the moon. India is on the moon. India made history as its moon mission became the first to land on the lunar south pole region. After the soft landing, the rover crawled out of the lander and roamed around the rocks and craters on the moon's surface, gathering crucial data and images and sent it back to Earth. The Chandrayaan-3 mission's objectives were to demonstrate safe and soft landing on lunar surface to demonstrate rover roving on the moon and to conduct in situ scientific experiments. The Chandrayaan-3 mission was a huge success. It gave us new insights into the chemical composition of lunar soil, seismic activities on the moon and many more. So we have landed on the moon. What's next? To land, collect samples and then come back. And that's what Chandrayaan-4 is. For Chandrayaan-4, there is a huge challenge. We not only have to go and land on the moon, collect the sample, take off from the surface of the moon like a rocket, go to the orbit of moon, raise its orbit to reach in Earth. Not only to reach Earth, but it has to finally land on Earth. Landing on Earth is much more difficult and equally challenging than landing on the moon surface because there is no atmosphere on moon, but on Earth there is an atmosphere and we need to overcome the atmospheric drag and heat, etc. So it will be a complex re-entry process. But more than that, we need to have different elements of the Chandrayaan-4 that need to be connected and assembled in orbit. When human beings went to moon for the first time in the US vehicle, they had to do the similar exercise of the docking and reconnecting in orbit. And also on moon, they have to come, go down and come back and dock to the mother craft at the orbit of the moon. Similar process need to be followed for Chandrayaan-4, even when you want to collect some samples from the surface of the moon. So that technology related to docking, connection, disconnection and reconnection will definitely be part of Chandrayaan-4 mission. So the Chandrayaan-4 envisages to develop and demonstrate technologies to come back to Earth after landing successfully on the moon and also collect moon samples and then analyze them back on Earth. The mission will be a critical building block for India's mission to land an Indian on the moon and return safely back to Earth, which is planned to be performed by the year 2040. The Chandrayaan-4 mission is expected to be completed within 36 months of approval. About 2,100 crore rupees will be sanctioned for the mission. After Moon and Mars, India sets its sights on Venus. The Union Cabinet approved the Venus Orbiter mission. Venus, as you know, is the closest planet to Earth. The Venus Orbiter mission will launch an orbiter in the orbit of planet Venus. For better understanding of the Venusian surface and subsurface, atmospheric processes and influence of Sun on Venusian atmosphere. It will also send a surface probe which will enter the Venusian atmosphere and descend under a parachute 
and land on the surface of Venus. It will study the underlying causes of transformation of Venus, which is believed to be once habitable and quite similar to Earth. ISRO has plans to launch the vehicle around March 2028. 1,236 crore rupees will be sanctioned for the Venus Orbiter mission, out of which 824 crore rupees will be spent on the spacecraft. Gaganyaan is India's human spaceflight mission that aims to put a crew of three Indians to an orbit of 400 kilometers for a three days mission and bring them back safely to Earth by landing in Indian sea waters. India's Gaganyaan quest started sometime around 2006, but there was limited progress on the program. Finally, the program received cabinet nod in December 2018 and 10,000 crore rupees were sanctioned for the program. As per the plans, ISRO will modify the heavy lift launcher LVM-3 to human ratings and it is named HLVM-3. It will be capable of launching the orbital module to the intended low Earth orbit of 400 km. The HLVM-3 consists of a crew escape system powered by a set of quick-acting high burn rate solid motors which ensures that crew module along with the crew is taken to a safe distance in case of an emergency, either at launch pad or during ascent phase. Orbital module that will be orbiting the Earth comprises of crew module and service module. The crew module is designed to have habitable space with Earth-like environment in space for the crew. It is also designed for re-entry to ensure safety of the crew during descent till touchdown. The service module will be used for providing necessary support to the CM while in orbit. Four astronauts have been selected from the group of test pilots from the Indian Air Force for the Gaganyaan mission. One of the four astronauts undergoing training for the mission will travel to the International Space Station as part of a collaborative effort with NASA. The four astronauts have also undergone training on a spaceflight basic module in Russia. And they are currently undergoing training at ISRO's astronauts training facility in Bengaluru for the Gaganyaan mission. So what's new now? As per the latest cabinet decision, the scope of Gaganyaan program is now being expanded with the introduction of Bharatiya Antarik Station or Indian Space Station. Currently, there are two active space stations orbiting the Earth, the International Space Station and China's Tiangong Space Station. The ISS, operational since 2000, is a collaborative effort among USS NASA, Russia's Roscosmos, European ESA, Japan's JAXA and Canada's CSA. China's Tiangong began operations in June 2022, following its first module's launch in April 2021, and it can host up to six astronauts. A space station serves as a hub of international research and has been extremely helpful to our scientific progress in space. It gives us the opportunity to understand the outer space and the learnings are vital in future lunar missions and further space exploration. Then why should India be left behind? Government has approved development of the first stage of the BAS, that is the BAS-1 will now be developed and technology validated. It will include four precursor missions for building BAS, including a docking demonstration. 20,193 crore rupees will be spent on the program and a deadline of December 2029 has been set for completion of all the launches and operation of BAS-1. Next, the next generation launch vehicle or NGLV. NGLV is extremely critical in establishing and operating the Bharatiya Antarik station and also towards developing capability for Indian crewed landing on the moon by 2040. As you know, ISRO relies on its LVM-3 rockets for all the heavy lifting. LVM-3 is a three-stage launch vehicle 
consisting of two solid propellant S200 strap-ons and core stages comprising of L110 liquid stage and C25 cryogenic stage. With a liftoff mass of 640 tons, this 43.5 meter tall three-stage launch vehicle is capable of carrying payloads up to 4 tons to GTO and 8 tons to low Earth orbit. So how is this next generation launch vehicle different? NGLV is designed to have a maximum payload capability of 30 tons to low Earth orbit. It will be a three-stage vehicle with liquid oxygen methane and cryo propulsion. It will be able to carry three times payload with 1.5 times the cost of LVM3. The most important aspect of the vehicle is it has a reusable first stage. Reusability is not a new idea. It has been around for quite some time, but its practical implementation happened only recently. In December 2015, SpaceX achieved a historic milestone. By successfully landing the first stage of a Falcon 9 rocket vertically on a landing pad at Cape Canaveral. Since then, the restoration of Falcon 9 boosters has become routine. And SpaceX continues to innovate with the reusable nose cone and the Starship rocket, a fully reusable space vehicle currently in testing. which SpaceX believes can transport humans from one point on Earth to another point within minutes. And can also be used to take humans to Moon, Mars and beyond. ISRO also has a reusable launch vehicle technology demonstrator program called RLVTD. In June this year, ISRO successfully completed its third reusable launch vehicle landing experiment, RLV LEX-3, at the Aeronautical Test Range in Chitradurga, Karnataka. The 21-foot long winged vehicle called Pushpak was dropped from an Indian Air Force Chinook helicopter at a height of 4.5 km and a similar distance away from the runway. Pushpak then automatically adjusted its course, approached the runway and made a precise horizontal landing right at the center of the runway. This time it showed that the launch vehicle could land on its own even in tougher conditions. This mission tested the approach and landing conditions of a vehicle returning from space at high speeds. After the success of the LEX program, ISRO's RLV-TD project is set to advance by testing an unmanned orbital re-entry vehicle. This new vehicle will be about 1.6 times larger than the Pushpak. It will be launched into a 400 km orbit within the next two years with a modified geosynchronous satellite launch vehicle or GSLV. Coming back to the NGLV, it will be demonstrated with three development flights with a target of 96 months or 8 years for the completion of the development phase. 8,239 crore rupees will be sanctioned for the program. After a relative calm, ISRO is back with a bang. Four mega critical projects approved. The enormity of the decision is difficult to assess right now. But we have entered a new era of space exploration that will have far-reaching consequences in near future. As a new space race hits up, India takes a huge step forward to be in that race. May the force be with us. I hope you liked the video. Do support our channel for more such informative content. Thank you.